Japan is so much more than just a country to the east of China. The country has a history that dates back centuries and a culture that's rich and multi-layered. Travelers can get lost in the country's island surroundings or in its densely populated metropolitan centers. But that's only the surface of this amazing country. Mount Fuji to Sagamo Bay, see the sky and back again, you'll not believe what strange stuff has been surfacing lately. And it's not what you think. 15 shocking things recently discovered in Japan. <coughs> Onagadori the Onagadori chicken is a bird that holds a special place in the hearts of the Japanese people too. The history of this interesting chicken breed can be traced all the way back to Germany. We're talking centuries. This is because the Onagadori chicken has the blood of a German phoenix chicken in it. However, the European history of the bird ends here. This is a Japanese breed through and through. It's found in the Tosa province of Japan, and here it's been bred for the last 400 years. It was around the year 700 to 900 AD that China had a large influence on Japan in terms of exported languages cultures, goods, plants, and even animals. One of the birds that we brought into Japan was the Shokoku. The Shokoku species would be bred with another species, which was the Totenko. The combination of the Shokoku species and the Totenko species led to the birth of a new breed, the Onagadori. By the 1920s, they were starting to be bred as cage birds. This was to prevent them from any accidents involving their large feathers that would grow to enormous lengths. Surprisingly, this is not a breed that you can find anywhere else in the world. It's only ever found in Japan. Now let's get ready for today's missing topic. Japan's Mount Fuji never looked so good and scary at the same time if this image has anything to say about it. Due to their ominous stationary positioning, some people have even confused these clouds for UFOs. Understandable. But why are the clouds acting this way? The white shawls that hover above the mountain are known as lenticular clouds, a type that usually forms over mountain peaks or similar protruding landmasses, and they're different from other clouds because they don't move. But we don't mind. They look amazing, right? They're formed when air moves over mountains, cooling down enough for condensation to take place, and they're continually reformed over the same location by new air rising up. Easy as that. But what was your first impression when you saw Mount Fuji with these stacks of clouds above it? Leave a comment with the hashtag missing topic. Hey, hey, did you know that if you smash the like button, subscribe and click the notification bell, you're more likely to win the lottery? So what are you waiting for? <laughs> Evaporated people. We all need a little alone time, don't we? Some folks take it a step further. Yohatsu, Japanese for evaporation, refers to the people in Japan who purposefully vanish from their established lives without a trace. People do this for a number of reasons, including depression, addiction, criminal misconduct, and a desire for isolation. Sometimes it's used to escape domestic violence, debt, and difficult family situations, the shame of job loss, divorce, and even failing an exam can also motivate people to disappear. In some cases, becoming an evaporated person is a way to just have a fresh start. When they disappear, they can abandon their former residences, jobs, families, names, and even appearances. In Japan, the topic is taboo in regular conversation. It's been estimated that 100,000 Japanese people disappear annually. In 2015, Japan's National Police Agency had registered 82,000 missing persons and 80,000 were found by the end of the year. It's been theorized that Japan's harsh work culture in combination with the lack of familial and community support has contributed to its prevalence. And believe it or not, this phenomenon can be seen all over the world, such as in the United States, the United Kingdom, and Germany. <laughs> Stinky Foot Dog Do your feet smell bad? Just a little or absolutely awful? A Japanese startup has designed a robot that can sniff out a person's feet and assess how strong the odor is. Why? Why not? It's a helpful little robot mutt who will bark if it detects moderately whiffy toes but will kill over if the stank is particularly pungent. The 6-inch dog, equipped with an odor detection sensor for a nose, also sprays air freshener to resolve the situation if the aroma is unbearable. Of all the senses, the sense of smell is the most important trigger of memory. Why is smell so intimately linked with our memory? 
One reason is that the olfactory system is located in the same part of our brain that affects emotions, memory, and creativity. Sniffing can also offer information on people's emotional states, such as if they're happy, sad, or fearful. Awareness of our innate smelling abilities, however, is complicated because the human language doesn't have words for a trillion smells, and much of smelling happens under the radar of our consciousness. Socially, smelly feet can be socially awkward in Japan, where shoes are removed at the entrance of every home. Plus, smells are becoming more of an issue in Japan, a place where subjecting others to your body odor can even be considered harassment. <laughs> Werewolf Scarecrow Farms in Japan have become home to various yet oddly horrifying robot wolves. But don't worry, they weren't created to terrorize local residents, although from the looks of the thing it probably did. They're officially known as Super Monster Wolves, and engineers designed it to stop animals from eating farmers' crops. In truth, the story of the robot wolf is more than a little sad. Wolves went extinct in Japan in the early 1800s. Now, parts of Japan are overrun with deer and wild boar. They love to feast on farmers' rice and chestnut crops. Obviously, farmers don't love this. Fast forward 200 years and humans create a robotic wolf to replace the species they killed off. But there is some good here. The first official trial of the robot wolf just ended, and surprise, it was a resounding success. Ultimately, the trials revealed that the wolf has an effective radius of just over half a mile, making it more effective than an electric fence. Still interested in something better than a traditional scarecrow? If you want a robo-wolf on your own, you can snag one for about $4,000. <laughs> Eel FaceTime A Japanese aquarium made lemonade out of lemons recently to help with their eels. They were lonely, so the aquarium started asking people to make video calls to its eels so the sensitive creatures remember that humans exist and don't pose a threat. The Sumida Aquarium, housed in the landmark Tokyo Skytree Tower, has been closed recently and its animals have become used to a largely human-free environment during the two-month calm. But the aquarium said the unprecedented situation was leading the eels to hide in the sand when the keepers pass by. It may sound crazy, but a lot of people claim there's a gentle side to eels. Some aquarium workers have even said the snake-like fish are even more like dogs, showing intelligence and memory uncharacteristic for a non-mammal. Eels are very sensitive and wary by nature, but 300 of them living in a tank at the aquarium had become used to humans and rarely hid in the sand when approached by visitors. In a bid to reacquaint the eels with humans, the aquarium set up five tablets facing the tank housing the delicate creatures, with eel enthusiasts asked to connect on FaceTime. Once the video calls start, people are supposed to show their faces, wave, and talk to the eels. <laughs> Transparent toilet. It may sound like a crazy idea, but wait till you see. Restrooms with transparent stalls opened in parks in Tokyo recently, challenging the stereotypes of dirty and dangerous public toilets. But don't worry, when the toilets are not occupied, the glass stalls are transparent, enabling users to check for cleanliness and safety before entering. At night, they light up the parks like beautiful lanterns. Users need not be concerned about being exposed to the outside world as the high-tech glass stalls and the toilet become opaque when locked, the transparency is another step in public accessibility in addition to equipping these public toilets with baby chairs and ample room for wheelchairs. People will no longer have to jiggle the door to see if it's occupied, since the walls turn opaque when the restroom is locked and in use. These next-gen public toilets, which double as public works of art, are designed by internationally renowned architects and famous designers. The toilets appear like clear, bright jewels from afar in shades of lime, violet, and aquamarine and are transparent from the inside and outside when unoccupied. It's a bold statement for Tokyo to make. This unconventional concept is ideal for Japan, where its people display a high level of civic consciousness. <laughs> Japanese Alien Fish If you're familiar with the alien in the alien movies, more specifically its iconic inner mouth, one look at this fish is enough to explain its comparison to the fictional alien. The creature looks a little like a chestburster from the Alien films, which feature fictional predatory extraterrestrials which aim at propagating their species and destroying the life that could pose a threat to their survival. Introducing the Warasubo, an eel-like creature that's reportedly as delicious as it is disgusting looking. It's a terrifying looking animal, especially in its dried form, which only makes its use as an ingredient for ramen and other Japanese foods that much stranger. 
Nearly blind, with translucent skin and featuring small but pointy teeth, the warasubo can be consumed either grilled or dried, whole or in powdered form as the main ingredient of a hearty soup or an extra flavoring in a cup of hot sake. It's apparently a very flavorsome treat that gets tastier the more you chew on it. While it may not look like the most delicious thing in the world, regional governments around the Ariaki Sea are actually using the alien-like creature to boost tourism in Japan. Whatever it takes, right? <laughs> Trash Collecting Samurai Look out, garbage! There's a new sheriff in town. Japan has a new social media sensation. The street performance group Litter Collecting Samurai, a group of environmentally conscious individuals who pick up rubbish in Tokyo streets while performing as samurai. From back alleys to crowded streets, they leave no stone unturned. Historically, the samurai were members of a powerful military caste in feudal Japan before rising to power in the 12th century. The traditional samurai code of honor, discipline, and morality is still alive today, the basic code of conduct for much of Japanese society, and these litter collectors are no exception. The group has been giving performances in Tokyo for years, and they've also been sharing their skills on social media through entertaining and educational content. The Samurai Moral Code, otherwise known as Bushido, upholds the virtues of righteousness, courage, benevolence, respect, sincerity, honor, loyalty, and self-control. It might not have been the group's original mission, but it seems like these environmental warriors give Bushido new life. Thanks to their huge following on social media, what started out as a small group has rapidly expanded. <laughs> Dragon Eye Lake This mythical Japanese lake transforms into a giant eye each spring during the thawing process. It's nestled in the middle of a dense forest and turns blue for about one week, from May to June. This is what gave it its unusual nickname, Dragon's Eye Lake. The unique site went viral in 2016 when a tourist took a photo of the white donut-shaped ring and called it the Dragon Eye on social media. This unique appearance of the lake in a circular shape inspired a legend about two dragon lovers. Apparently, they chose this body of water for their rendezvous. While many believe that the legend of the lake is more convincing than science, there's a plausible explanation. The spring thaw causes snow to accumulate in the middle of the lake due to pressure from its depths, creating a pupil-like structure with a circle of blue water around. Windy weather causes the snow-covered ice at the center to rotate, creating the illusion of a moving pupil. It's a remarkable natural phenomenon, and many people come from around Japan and abroad to witness it at the end of spring. And Dragon's Eye Lake has become a more popular tourist attraction due to the popularity of videos and photos shared via social media. <laughs> Tree Crop Circles What kind of extraterrestrial sorcery is this? Crop circles are a staple of the conspiracy theorists, attributed to UFO landings or intricate forms of extraterrestrial communication. So imagine the excitement some must have felt when photos of incredible geometric designs emerged in a forest in Japan recently. And it's not from some squashed wheat, but from large, mature Japanese cedar trees. Sadly, for those who want to believe, there's a perfectly innocent yet still interesting explanation that originates firmly here on planet Earth. The picturesque natural formations aren't the results of an alien invasion, but rather a well-thought-out plan that took place half a century ago. And now, in the Miyazaki Prefecture of southern Japan, groups of Japanese cedar trees swell toward the sky, creating mysterious concentric circles. What's now visible is due to a 1973 project regarding growth and tree spacing. At the time, the area was designated an experimental forestry, and one experiment saw researchers planting trees in 10-degree radial increments to form 10 concentric circles. What's now visible, even on Google Earth, are the results after 45 years. The original plan called for the trees to be harvested in five years, but given the new interest, officials are considering saving the circular forest. Hmm. Water Fountain Town Known as Miyama's Thatched Village and has a higher percentage of thatched roof farmhouses than any other place in Japan. It's famous for its hidden sprinkler system capable of transforming the whole place into a water fountain. No wonder it's a popular spot for tourists. The water fountain town exists for good reason. The whole area is quite vulnerable to fire. Local officials realized this way back in 2000 that a fire burned down the archive center. This led to the locals not only asking the people to remain vigilant at all times, but also to install a unique sprinkler system for covering the entire town. The locals didn't jeopardize the aesthetics of the Japanese hamlet with automated sprinklers. Instead, 
they had 62 metal sprinklers concealed in small wooden houses that resembled the authentic ones in Kayabuki no Sado. Once the system is activated, the roofs of these houses move apart, thus making way for the sprinklers to fire jets of water into the sky. The strategically placed sprinklers fire powerful jets of water into the air to cover all of the thatched roof houses. On sunny days, these sprinklers are even able to create rainbows over the village. The sprinkler is tested twice on a yearly basis, generally in December and May. <laughs> Pillow Fighting Championship Meet your new favorite sport, pillow fighting. Most of us have enjoyed a good pillow fight at some time in our lives. If you haven't, you don't know what you're missing. But here in Japan, pillow fighting is taken to a whole new level. Since 2013, the All Japan Pillow Fighting Championships have been held here, and it was inspired by the kind of pillow fights Japanese children on extended school trips often have when teachers aren't looking in the large tatami matted communal rooms of the Japanese inn where they spend the night. The game starts with all five players sleeping under comforters and then leaping to their feet when the whistle is blown as they grab a pillow and begin the match. A cross between chess and dodgeball, the purpose of the game, carried out in two-minute sets, is to protect each team's general from being whacked and trying to whack the other team's general as well. One player on each side can use a blanket to shield incoming pillows. There's even a special rule where one player can call out, the teacher's coming which allows them to snatch the other team's pillows. Can we make this an Olympic sport, please? <laughs> Deko Chari Deko in Japanese is short for decoration, and Chari is slang for bike. The Deko Chari is a form of art bike indigenous to Japan dating back to the mid-1970s, characterized by the use of plywood accessories, chrome plating, light displays, and high-tech audio systems and there are currently several Dekachari bike gangs in Japan. The origin can be traced back to the 1970s, when Japan's Dekatara truck decoration trend was just starting out and gaining attention from people all over the world. Since kids did not have access to a truck of their own to decorate, they started taking part in the culture by painting their bicycles and thus gave rise to the Dekachari culture, which is prevalent even today. Due to the excessive decoration and lighting which led to legal problems faced by the drivers, the Dekachari culture has long since vanished from the roads of Japan and is now a rare sight to see on specific occasions. And is now a rare sight to see on specific occasions. The decorations used for Dekachari bicycles are made from plywood and chrome plating, which may seem lightweight on the outside, but are made of heavy equipment and end up making the bicycle weigh over 200 pounds. Hence, most of the Dekachari bicycle owners are young adults and teenagers who want to let their creative juices flow. <laughs> Underwater Post Box Over 25 feet deep off the coast in Susami Bay in Japan, you can post your mail in a post box underwater. Incredibly, it usually receives up to 1,500 pieces of mail per day, many posted by family members for their loved ones. In the year 2000, the Guinness Book of World Records recognized this underwater post box, within which approximately 32,000 pieces of mail have been posted. That's why this little piece of infrastructure carries a special significance. This post box mainly lures those people who purchase the waterproof cards on which the message is written with the help of the oil-based paint markers, because of which the message can remain intact on the card despite the underwater immersion. Once the postcard is written, all the sender has to do is dive down and insert it into the mailbox on the ocean floor for later pickup. That's it! Those willing to take the plunge can strap on a wetsuit and mail letters from under the sea. Incredibly, the local dive shop owner descends each day to collect and deliver these letters to the post office. The underwater post box actually came into being during a fair in the year 1999. This idea was proposed by a then postmaster as part of an effort to give special attention to Susami Bay. <laughs> Burning Mountain You've heard of Burning Man, the American art festival in the desert? Welcome to Burning Mountain, an annual festival during which the grass on a Japanese hillside is set on fire. It's been taking place for hundreds of years and its precise origins are unclear. One theory claims that the burning of the mountainside began during boundary conflicts between Nara's great temples. 
while another claims the fires were used to drive away wild boars. The festival officially begins at noon, after which a variety of minor events take place around the base of the mountain. Later on, a firework display is held for about 15 minutes. Afterward, the fire from the bonfire is used to set the grass on the mountainside alight and the fire gradually spreads all across the mountain. When the grass is dry, the entire mountain is burnt relatively quickly. It usually takes 30 minutes to one hour for the entire area to burn, depending on the conditions of the grass each year. Because of the location's elevation over Nara, both the fireworks and the fire are visible throughout the day. In addition to the view from the base of the mountain, there are several other good vantage points throughout Nara Park and the city. You thought you knew a lot about Japan before, but after these videos, you're probably seeing this amazing place in a new light. We certainly are. So like and subscribe if you want to see more great places, faces, and spaces like these.